Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a comparison video between the Super Tool 300 Leatherman and the Leatherman Signal. Okay, so let's get right into it without a lot of discussion. Now, I'm going to go real quick. Pliers. Full serrated blade. Saw. Three D Phillips screwdriver, a flat tip pry tool slash screwdriver, and also acts as a chisel, sharp enough to be a chisel. Okay. Uh, can opener. Okay. And that's all of it on that side. Let's go to the next side. Dedicated blade. Metal file. Also probably can be used to sand wood as well. Uh, here is another uh, larger flat tip screwdriver slash pry tool slash chisel. And another flat tip wider screwdriver okay and it comes with an awl hole puncher okay and it also comes with a retractable key ring all right now that's all of the tools that are on the super tool 300 with the pliers of course and then set this and all of these tools lock okay now let's go to the super uh signal signal uh leatherman signal okay out on the outside it comes with a blade sharpener that detaches from the handle and you can sharpen serrated and straight blades on the other side is a ferro rod that detaches and you can start fires with and also part of the ferro rod is a whistle okay that detaches from the handle that you can use comes with standard Leatherman pliers okay uh, both Leatherman Super 300 and uh, signal the uh, cutter the wire cutter is replaceable all right let's go on with the tools with the super I mean with the signal uh, Leatherman signal the main blade is accessible from the outside and it's one-handed open. Whereas to the Super Three Super Tool 300, most of your tools have to be accessed with two hands, and it has to be open to be accessed. On the outside also is a saw. Okay. It has a uh, standard belt clip. It has a pummel and carabiner. The carabiner is also uh, a bottle opener, okay? Also in the uh, pommel area is a hexagonal adapter to uh, use as a socket tool, socket handle. All right. Going inside is a... A reamer all it has a bit exchanger tool socket standard leatherman affair very versatile right here can opener and that's pretty much all of the tools that are on the leatherman signal Purposes of these tools. Number one, let's get all these blades out and then just want to have it all open. I, I can't open the blade while the pliers are open and the saws, but you get the gist. 
Now, here's the comparison. And I'm going to do some demonstrations, so stand by, please. The Super Tool 300 is more uh, versatile at, for utility use. The signal uh, is uh, designed for uh, wilderness camping uh, and wilderness survival. Okay. Both of those, both of these tools can be used for many same purposes, okay? Now, here is my gripe. The Leatherman Signal, I love it to death. It is a great concept, and I, I hope that they develop this even further for the outdoorsman camper survivalists, okay? Because... The knife sharpener and also the ferro rod is a very good idea. Love it. My major gripe, my major gripe of the Leatherman signal is the main blade is partially serrated. Now there is a place and time for part, uh, serrated blades and then there is a place and time for uh, straight blades okay regular blades now to put them together to me is very uh, should I say anti-productive okay you either going to need when you're cutting something a serrated blade or you're gonna need if you're slicing something you're gonna need a straight blade okay you don't need both at the same time so putting both on one blade is a huge mistake, okay? Any knife that has this sort of design is, I believe, is designed by someone who really don't use knives, okay? Now, I'm not saying that I don't like serrations. Serrations have its place, okay? When you're cutting something, that has a smooth surface and you need that extra grip to cut into something, almost like a saw. Uh, smooth cordage, uh, nylon cordage, uh, something that is something that is very smooth and very tough and stubborn, you will need a serrated blade to cut through, okay? There are uh, tougher, thicker things that you need to cut through that a straight blade possibly will not get enough grip to cut into okay so you need a serrated blade but you don't need it on a 50 50 blade now i could understand that people at leatherman wanted uh the person with this knife to have both options and uh i could understand that uh logic but Putting it on one small short blade like this is really just totally, totally, uh, I don't know, half-assing it, in my opinion. Because this may be the only tool that I have out there, and I may have to rely on food processing, and, I, and the only part of the blade that I can use for food processing is right here. This right here, if I was cut tomatoes or, or soft vegetables and things like that. It is just mutilated, okay? So this is not a kitchen knife. This is not a knife that you would use to uh, process food with. This is right here. And to only have that much real estate, is you might as well be just carrying a, uh, a peanut, you know, a slip joint peanut to work with, you know, basically. So anyway, let's find out if you can in fact at least carve with the serrated part because people when people do carving they don't carve like this they carve up here where they get the most grip and uh, leverage okay so let's see if we can carve yes you can carve with a serrated blade It will eat into the wood and carve, okay? But if you want a smoother cut, 
you would want to use a regular blade. All right. But main, mainly, if you're out there with this tool only, no other cutting tool, and you need to, like I say, process food and things like that, you want a regular knife. You don't want the serration, all right? Unless you're cutting meat that is tough as leather, all right? All right. Now, the, le the Leatherman uh, Super Tool 300 has one up on the signal is that it has a dedicated serrated blade. for that stubborn cut that you need to cut into, okay? It comes with the saw, just like the Leatherman signal. And it comes with a dedicated blade, straight blade, which is razor sharp. I sharpened it today, um, so it's quite sharp. Let me... There you go. Blade is locked out. Also, the tools on these, on, on the signal, also locks out. Okay? Now let's carve with this. Yes. Very good. Now, I have to say, the serration did carve well. Okay? In fact, I would argue that it kind of ate into the uh, wood better but far as in traditional carving you would want a smooth cut a consistent smooth cut all the way down this is like sharpening a pencil you know right here also good for better feathering as well Not a great featherer, better for carving than feathering. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my gripe between the two. I really wish that uh, Leatherman had, if they wanted to use a serrated, uh, uh, have a serrated uh, blade for the signal, they should have, I think, added in a uh, third blade in, in addition to the saw inside somewhere in the handle maybe a dedicated serrated blade you know uh but the outside blade the main blade should be just a straight edge blade but like i said The serrated blade, like I said, will bite into the bite into the wood, but it won't leave a smooth cut. It'll leave chunks behind. I mean, it just you know, it's not something that you would want to. Car with because it's not going to leave a smooth smooth cut okay So what do I think? I think that if you are carrying a uh, fixed blade on your belt, a survival knife, bushcraft knife, whatever you want to call it, if it's a fixed blade, full tang, 
heavy duty belt knife, then this is a great addition to your kit, your survival kit, your bushcraft kit, uh, your uh, outdoors kit, hiking, whatever. Now, to many serious hikers, the very serious hikers, uh, both of these may be just too heavy, especially those hikers that are counting every ounce. Heavy, heavier, okay? So uh, a lot of uh, your hikers, uh, through, uh, through hikers that hike for miles and miles, uh, cross country and things like that, and they will avoid tools like this. They will carry something like the Swiss Army knife, which is lighter. Uh, they will, if they want a fixed blade knife, they will carry something like a Morak Neve uh, that is small, very uh, tough, very good knives. Uh, ultralight campers and hikers, uh, they normally will stick with uh, Swiss Army knives that are basically very light, okay, much lighter than these. Uh, Super Tool 300. Great for a, uh, or a workman who works with tools all day. To have something like this on their belt is probably very handy to have. Uh, also, I, I find it very useful because um, this Leatherman reside inside my bug out bag. Okay, my bug out bag consists of self rescue tools, self uh, personal protection equipment like masks, goggles, um, and hear, uh, uh, earplugs and such. Uh, tools that will get me out of trouble if trouble was to occur. Uh, let's say I'm uh, downtown or uh, I'm in a area, uh, urban area and disaster strikes, okay? and uh, I get to my car, my car is disabled by EMP or my car is broke down and I need to take my bug out bag from my uh, truck box and start hiking it, okay? Now I may come across a piece of property that uh, is a shortcut to get home, okay? Uh, it's, I'm sorry, I meant to say get home bag, not bug out bag, but it's about the same thing. Let's say I'm trying to get home and I have to cut through this piece of property, all right? So uh, I get to a end of the property and there's a chain link fence, all right? Now chain link fence requires either you climb over it or you cut through it. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm getting too old to be climbing over fences, especially if the fence is barbed wired or too high for me to climb over with all my gear. So what do you do? You use these to cut the chain link fence. It'll take a while. It'll be kind of hard to do, but eventually you'll cut enough of that fence to get through, all right? So you don't want something very light, even though this one and other Leathermen have pliers and wire cutters, and they could be heavy duty, but in that, in, in the instance where you're trying to cut through a chain link fence, fence, you want something very heavy, heavy duty, okay? So this is probably one of the most heavy duty uh, Leatherman that you can purchase, the Leatherman Super Tool 300. I think uh, there are other, le uh, one other Leatherman that is very popular, was it the Wave or the Surge? Okay, I think the Surge might be uh, as heavy or heavier or more heavy duty than this, but, this is the kind of tool you need to get home in an urban situation where you need to cut through chain link fences. Is it ideal for cutting chain link fences? No, because like I said, um, these are just heavy duty wire cutters and you really have to hmm, work at it to cut through enough of that chain link fence to get through, but you will get eventually through. It's better than trying to climb over a 10, 15, 20 foot chain link fence and break your neck, you know, trying to climb down or hurt yourself, all right? So, main purpose of this tool is to get home or bug out, okay? Main, main purpose of this tool is for hiking, casual hiker, 
serious camper, a uh, bushcrafter, you know, a person who likes to spend time outdoors. I'm not saying this can't be used in an urban situation because it does have the screwdriver, it does have the pliers, it does have um, uh, uh, the knife and everything else. And also it has the pommel, which I like. Uh, in, you can actually use this pommel to drive in nice uh, thin wooden uh, tent stakes or uh, metal tent stakes. All right, uh, it comes handy in a pinch. All right. So that's my recommendation uh, to Leatherman is that. If you're going to put a serrated blade in the tools, make it a dedicated serrated blade, please. Um, make it a dedicated serrated blade. And also, at the same time, add a dedicated regular blade. Okay. A multi-tool is supposed to be multifunctional. Okay, and you should have as many tools as it possibly can in the parameters that of the of the design. So I don't see any problems or uh, a Leatherman adding possibly a serrated a serrated blade and getting rid of this partially serrated blade, so it can be just a full blade. Like I said it would make doing certain things a lot easier and like i said for fine detail work the serrated blade does carve okay i'm not i'm not saying it doesn't you can do fine carving with the serrated part of the blade but in my opinion It leaves like a, a, a wave, a slight wavish kind of trail behind. And um, to me, that's just, I don't know. For a serious wood carver, I don't think any serious wood carver would use a serrated blade to carve wood. You want absolute control of your surfaces. And although the serrated blade may eat into the cutting surface better, um, it, it's more of a, I'm gonna take out a chunk of you than actually doing fine detail work, okay? So that's my major gripe. Once again, I repeat myself. Leatherman, uh, love the Leatherman signal, but we need to get rid of this partially serrated bull crap you guys are doing. You know, either make it, make a dedicated extra serrated blade in the tool and, but always leave your main blade nice and classically straight and uh, sharp, you know? Because um, that's what these tools are. Mainly they are knives with tools built into them. And the main blade has to be the star of the show, okay? So uh, uh, sharing that stage with a serrated blade, to me, it just, I don't know. Uh, leave a comment down below. Maybe uh, I'm wrong, uh, but that's just my opinion. More experienced people uh, out there, uh, such as yourselves, that are watching this video may have a more expert opinion about this please leave a comment below and let me know, uh, am I right or wrong? Or uh, do you agree with me or disagree with me? Okay. I love both of them, I really do. I've had this for over 15 years. I think I'm probably going on 20 years now, okay? And it is just a beast, a beast I tell you, okay? Um, I was not satisfied with the edge uh, for a while, but then once I began to practice uh, 
uh, sharpening and uh, honing and chopping. Um, I have to say this knife right here is as sharp as about any knife that I have and I am quite pleased with it, quite pleased with it, okay? I just, I just wish they did a little better. I wish that they give you a little bit better blade, maybe more substantial blade on this single. Um, maybe the people who designed this uh, did not think of this as possibly becoming it uh, a person's main tool or main cutting tool. Maybe this they designed it with the intentions of this accentuating or adding to a survival kit where the person has a fixed blade knife or even a uh, more substantial folding knife that is dedicated to having a regular blade. Uh, this is just a uh, accent to whatever people carry. But in my opinion, uh, if you're gonna make a tool that is built for survival and at least make it this heavy, I would say go all the way. Go all the way and put in the extra blade for deceration and uh, uh, make the main blade more substantial so that it can be used for that task of survival. And I'm not saying that uh, this blade here with the partially serration uh, cannot be used in survival. Definitely can be used for survival. You know, it is, it is, the, uh, it is up to the skill of the user, okay? Um, you can use the front end here, the front portion, for all your knife needs. You can use this portion here for all your serrated needs. Um, but in a survival situation for a novice like me, I want something that I can just not have to focus on parts of the tool to get certain jobs done. I just want to be able to get into it and get it done. You know, I'm not there to use my skills. I'm there to survive, right? But uh, like anything else, if you practice enough with this, you can make just about anything work if you practice with anything that uh, you make it make work, okay? So, yeah. Look at that. Look how smoothly that moves across, across the wood. Look how smoothly, look at, look, look how it's feathering, actually. I'm, I'm actually, the, the knife, love the knife. This, this blade right here, this angle, the geometry on this signal uh, is excellent. It's just like razor. It will, look, look at the, look at the feathering, the mi micro feathering that it did. Smooth, you know, it's cutting. Uh, really well uh, but I can't I don't think I can do that with the serration part not as smooth it's doing it it's doing it not bad but like I said it didn't move across the wood smooth look at that Huh? So I don't know. I mean, it's just maybe it's just a matter of taste. Maybe I am wrong, but uh, I don't know. Who am I to criticize people who experts who make these for a living? They probably have uh, tested this blade out in the field and found it satisfactory to them. But uh, I just find that uh, if you're going to add serration, uh, uh, make a, a blade all the way across like with that serration would be excellent. Also make a blade with an edge like this all the way across, that blade would be even more excellent. 50-50, 50% excellent here, 50% excellent there. It's just on one blade to me, I don't know. It's just not, I, 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 I don't know. But anyway, like I said, leave a comment below. Let me know what your expert opinion is. I know there's a lot of people out there that know more about this stuff than I do. I'm just a novice. I'm just giving my personal opinion about this. So thank you very much for watching, sticking around, and watching all this 30 minutes of video. I promise you I'm going to try to cut these videos shorter. 
But thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.